Hey everybody, thank you so so much for tuning in. So I know a lot of you have not seen my face for a while and I promise you I have been posting. I did take a little break, I'm not gonna say anything, but I did take a little break, but I have been getting tons of complaints that people have not been receiving my notifications since my COVID updates, but I promise you there have been a ton of videos on my channel since my last COVID update. Obviously YouTube is changing something in the system, so notifications are a little wonky for my channel and a few others. People have also been telling me that they're automatically unsubscribed. So the only thing I can suggest is following me on Instagram so that you're up to date with what I'm up to. I always post my new crafts, and now that this whole thing is going on, I post more than one picture so that if you miss one post you have another and I always do the swipe up option. So for today's video I have some Dollar Tree DIY decor pieces including my very 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 popular faux beaded wreath. If you haven't seen the original I posted it back in March 8th and now I'm posting another version which I think looks so much more boho and I love and thank you so much to everybody who has recreated it and tagged me on instagram who's tagged me on facebook who just drops my tutorial in facebook groups i appreciate you all so so much so before we get into the video i do want to ask that you hit that subscribe button because once you hit subscribe we instantly become best friends did we just become best friends yep hit that notification bell set them to all youtube may or may not let you know when i post a video but if they don't just follow me on instagram and let's go ahead and get started so for the first tutorial, I'm going to be making the faux beaded wreath and I'm going to use two packs of these table tennis balls. You don't want to use the golf balls. This is going to be the exact same thing as the tutorial that I did back in March 8th. So if you are going to use a drill, make sure that you push the drill bit in first before you start it and then you're going to pick up your ball and go straight through. Make sure that your drill bit is inside before you start drilling. You don't want this to slip because this is plastic. So once it goes through, you can go ahead and just remove the top piece. If you don't have a drill, then you can use a skewer. You can use whatever you want. There are so many options. I put this on a wood skewer so that I can go ahead and spray paint it. And before we spray paint, I'm gonna take these wreath forms from Dollar Tree. You can also take the regular ones and cut them down. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to start removing those little round pieces. So the cool thing about using the 3D wreath form is that you have a ton of these things left. So if you do want to make a wire wreath later on with just these thin pieces, you can do that. Make sure that when you cut those pieces off that you're kind of pressing them down so that you don't get hurt when you're trying to put these balls in and then carefully feed your balls through. I did end up using two packs for this, but if you're making a much bigger wreath, of course, use more. I'm not filling it all the way up. And when I get to the bottom, I'm gonna use some floral tape from Dollar Tree. The trick to using this is to pull. So once you get it, you're just gonna start pulling to activate that tape and wrap all the way around. Now I'm just gonna cover up those two pieces that are sticking out because I don't wanna get hurt if I grab this, but I'm not gonna cover the whole thing. For the first tutorial, I did cover the entire wire, but that is not necessary. Where I am going to add some is on the ends where the balls move around, just so that they stop moving. And I wanna make this as tight as possible so that I can position my beads in the way that I want. So some beads do look a little wonky on the back and look a little better in the front or whatever I consider the front or back. So this way I can just tilt them a little bit and you can't see any imperfections. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing to the other side and then it's time to decorate. So Dollar Tree has a ton of options. This is all of the foliage that they have. I do have a ton left over from my grab bag. So I'm just gonna use this, which I like the color a whole lot more. I believe it's from my Michaels grab bag. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna wrap it in place using some of the floral wire, making sure that it's nice and hidden and then just working my way up this is probably not even a full bouquet because I remember these bouquets being really, really, really big. The benefit to using the floral wire is that if you wanna reuse the greenery later on or you wanna switch it out because you wanna make it a different season or whatever you want, you can just take an X-Acto knife and kind of remove it. 
where if you use hot glue, it ruins your greenery. I found these succulent clips at Dollar Tree and I love them because you don't have to glue them down or tape them down. You just clip them in place and remove them when you want. I used two of those and two of their regular succulents. And then I just added these tiny little pink flowers on the side for a pop of color. Of course you can do that in the middle, but I didn't want to make a pink focal point. And then I added hot glue, but I added it to the back of the succulent so I can reuse my greenery. This is what it's looking like. Of course, you can use whatever flower combination you want. So here is my original faux beaded wreath from March 8th, and here is the new one. For my next tutorial, I'm going to be using six of these little drawers, which I found in the Crafter Square section of Dollar Tree. P.S. and by the way, you can find these exact same drawers at Michael's for a dollar as well. So if you don't have a Crafter Square section, Michael's has a little wood section as well. I'm going to be using the Dollar Tree wood glue and some binder clips to hold this in place. And I realized that I touched this glue during my last tutorial. I'm so used to using Gorilla Wood Glue, which is non-toxic, and you can freely touch it. I don't think this one is, so definitely use a sponge brush or whatever you have. Now these boxes aren't perfect, so if you see that they're not lining up perfectly, if you have a sander, you can kind of sand it down later on to make it a little bit more even, or even before I did end up sanding this just so it looked a little bit better when you tilted it and then I put my binder clips in place and let it dry overnight you don't have to let it dry overnight 20 minutes will suffice but I kind of just walked away and did my thing the next day I removed the binder clips and I gave it the old shake a shake -a and tap a tap -a. Shout out to Chef John. And it's nice and secure. So now I'm gonna take some watered down brown paint. This is Nutmeg Brown. I usually stain, but the smell of stain has really been getting to me. So I'm just gonna brush it on like I would regular paint. And if there's any areas that aren't taking, you can always just sand it down and try again. There's an area that I put wood glue on in the wrong direction, which you can see is not taking the paint. So full disclosure, these pieces from Dollar Tree are not going to stain the same as a regular piece of wood. Even if I would have used regular stain, they always end up a little blotchy. So just keep that in mind before you commit to painting it. So every time I did go over it, it did get a little bit darker. And once I put my drawers in, I went over it one more time just to make sure the color is as even as I can get it. For the feet, I'm going to use the chest feet, which I use in my enamel tub tutorial, and I'm just going to paint it using this gold. This gold makes it nice and bright. I've used other golds before and they end up dull. The trick is to just not touch it. Just paint it and leave it alone. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach it using a mix of hot glue and E6000. I'm going to flood the inside with E6000. And then I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue on the rim just so that it has that instant hold. Make sure that you are getting this nice and straight. For this, you want to make sure that you let this dry really well. There's no air getting in there, so it's going to take much longer for the E6000 to dry. And it should stand perfectly when you finally stand it up. Now, I am going to teach you how I did those little thingies right there. I just filmed this backwards because I made two of these. I'm going to use these paper clips from Dollar Tree and these little hanging kits, which bring six of these eye hooks. Now I'm just going to take the paper clip and remove my little tassel. It does have a little hook on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that little eye hook and open it up and then slide our little tassel in and close it back up. These are the ones that I made. I still have purple left over. So you can do whatever you want with the extra ones or make two extra drawers. Now I'm just gonna measure out and make my markings on where I want these little things to go. So I used my square tool from Dollar Tree and lined it up from the bottom and the sides. I did use my drill bit for this just to make it easier for me to actually twist that in. But if you have the time, you can twist it in by hand. If you notice that any of them are kind of loose, what you can do is just dip the end in a little bit of your wood glue and then twist it in and let it dry. 
When you're done, this is what you're left with, and of course you can make it vertically or horizontally, but I absolutely love it. So that's it for me. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section which one is your favorite. Do you like the original wreath that I made or do you like this updated version? And as usual, thank you so so much for watching. I appreciate you so much and I will hopefully see you on the next one.